us and we go out of here and we're getting to our lesson. Okay, so we're studying Revelation chapter 21 and we have our outline here. Uh, it's a three part series uh, in our lesson today. All things new is the first part we'll be covering. The second part we'll be covering is the New Jerusalem. And the third part is the glory of the Holy City. Following the judgment scene that ended in the previous chapters, uh, chapter 20, the eternal destiny of the redeemed is now revealed. The design of a new heaven and new earth along with the new Jerusalem is used to provide great hope and comfort to Christians. It is also the chapter where we see destiny of the redeemed uh, depicting fellowship uh, with God and protection by God. The narration of chapter 21 follows directly from chapter 20, beginning with the conjunction and. It is a continuing record of actual events that, that John is seeing here. Uh, in fact, to emphasize the succession of future historical events, the Revelation record and is used to begin almost every verse in chapter 21. That's unusual. Okay. Becky, talk about it. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Okay. Both earth and heaven are made new and adapted to the vast moral and physical changes which the eternal state necessitates. The new heaven is for the raised and changed saints, and the new earth will be a habitat for those who during the millennium reign were alive on earth. The first two chapters of Genesis describes the first heaven and the first earth as being what? Very good. In their creation state. The word new here is not describing something novel or young, but rather the meaning is refreshed or renewed. The new earth is actually the old earth that has been purged by fire, but God and is once again perfect with no sin or death. The new heaven in our text should not be confused with the heaven of heavens, which is the dwelling place of God. The latter subsists on moral and physical perfection and undergoes no change. The passing away of dissolution or inhabitation is effected by fire. And we're talking about uh, 2 Peter 3.10 there. Okay. The new earth and the new heaven are what? Eternal. It means they last forever. Evidently, there will be no need for sea on the earth uh, in the eternal state. However, there will be what? Water. We know that pure river of water of life will flow from the throne of God. And there will also be water above the heaven again. Okay. Uh, if we stop there and look at our verse here, you'll see that in 2 Peter 3.10 it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in night, and which what the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth shall also be worked, and therein shall be burned up. And then uh, Psalms 148.8 says, Praise him, ye heavens and earth, ye waters that are above the heavens. And then in verse 6 it says, He has established them forever and ever. That's eternal. Okay? And he has made a decree which shall not pass. Okay? Those are reference verses for that. Uh, let's see. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay. Okay, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, 
coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. What does all that mean? Okay. The holy city of Jerusalem is described by John as what? The bride of Christ. This is the first time John has identified himself by name since Revelation chapter 1. What John is seeing is, is glorious and magnificent and that he emphasizes he is there observing. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he it will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Okay, let's see what that's talking about. The great voice was what? The voice of God. Okay? The church is the new tabernacle for the habitation. And that's found in uh, Ephesians 2.22. And though it's God's dwelling, it would men, and they shall what? Be his people. Verse number four. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Okay. The reference here is to wiping away tears, highlights God's compassion for his people. Sorrow, death, and pain will all end along with what? The tears. Mourning and crying that resulted from them. This is the final reversal of the curse that took place in Genesis when God cursed the earth. Death has been what? Destroyed by him. Who was dead and behold, he is alive forevermore. Revelations 118. The world as it was before the judgment is no more. Thank goodness. Verse 5. Thomas. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Okay. He who sat on the throne gave what? His command, which the angel communicated to John. And in a final several phrase, John referred to the original command given to him by Christ in Revelation 1.19. John swore the truthfulness of what he was about to write. Verse number six. You want to do it? Sure. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is averse to the fountain of the water of life freely. Okay. okay. The vision here concerns the church and tribulation had ended and the revelation had ended. God is the Alpha and Omega because He is the beginning and ending of the creation and in salvation. The induced offering uh, for all who drink of the fountain of the river of life freely was both what literal water and spiritual water of everlasting life. Number seven, Don. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. You could okay. read that. The overcomers, okay? What well, is every believer, okay? And will inherit these things. What well, things are that? Is the blessing of the new creation mentioned, okay? And where are they mentioned that? The promise completes. The emphasis of the other seven promises in chapter one, or in chapter two and three of Revelation. So if we go back and read that, uh, there are seven other promises there. God would be to them all that he is properly implied in the name of God. He would bestow upon them all the blessing which is appropriate for, for God to bestow. God shall sustain the Christian or the believers in the relation of a son and shall be treated as such. Okay? He would forever own sustain in this relationship and be honored as a child of God. So you're adopted in and be a child of God. Okay? Verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which furnished with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. Okay. Here, 
for the announcement of doom on all classes of unbelievers and all parties and accomplices to the persecution implying also a warning to, uh, uh, to any among the overcomers against falling into any of this. Okay. This time the devil uh, prospers. Prospects are even greater than they ever been because the human population of what had reached the highest number in history. But before the old devil may be surprised by his success. Verse number nine, Becky. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Okay. The vision of the holy city was in contrast to the vision of Babylon the Great, the mother of Harlot, the abominations of the earth in chapter 17. In comparison, the angel in the cha two chapters 17 and 20, 21 use the same identification and language describing their function, but for a different mission. In chapter 17 and 19, this angel was on a mission of announcing judgment upon the harlot woman. But in chapter 21, the mission of the same angel was to what? To exhibit the holy city, the bride. The angel invites John to see the vision of the bride, the lamb's wife. Verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Okay. John was carried, what, in spirit, to the mountain, and these things were shown to him in a vision. John was shown the grandeur and glory of the triumphant church, which is the holy city of Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. In this vision, John saw the great city descending. It had not already descended. The event was happening as he watched. Verse 11. Having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Okay. Instead of the sun and moon, Jerusalem has the splendor of God to enlighten them. That's in Isaiah 26, 19. God's glory is likened to a jasper, an exceedingly bright stone that's very durable. That's a picture of a jasper stone. Okay. In God, there is no darkness, only the everlasting day. There will be no night and no more darkness, nothing but everlasting joy, peace, prosperity, and happiness. That's as Isaiah uh, 61. Sounds like a place we won't be no more. <laughs> okay. Verse number 12. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Okay. This is describing uh, part of the New Jerusalem, what we will see there. The city's wall with twelve gates got caught what? John's attention there. Uh, you see from the picture there. That there's uh, the angels and what? That there's a great pearl by each gate. The high wall suggests security and safety. Many gates also suggest, suggest great freedom to far access. That's how many gates? Twelve. Twelve. Three on each side. Okay. The angelic guard uh, presents a picture of additional security. Uh, we were talking about before the class started why these guards and walls were needed. You know, if all the devil and all his crowd uh, is in, in hell where there should be, you know. But uh, the old Jerusalem had walls and gates, so uh, the new Jerusalem has walls and gates. The fact that each gate bears the name of one of Israel's tribe is an indication that God may perpetuate the memory of Israel throughout eternity. And you see a picture there, the 12 gates, three on each side. Each one uh, is, a, is a, one of the 12 tribes, okay? 
Verse 13, Thomas. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. Okay. The city was a square. In Revelation 21, 16, and the same number of gates is assigned to each quarter or each wall. The gates serve as avenues which the chosen go into the city and are forever open. Verse 14. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lord. Okay. As the walls and gates represent protection, so the foundation speaks of what? Permanence. There you see the 12 apostles, and you see uh, the uh, corresponding uh, wall, uh, or foundation, not wall, of the thing is set on, and what each one of them is. Uh, John, he's a, he's a sapphire, okay? And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Verse 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the sea, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And he that talked with me, that's the angel, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. The reed is a picture of the angel with a golden rod. The reed, or rod, or measuring rod, is made of gold. You notice what? The glorious state of the church being without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. The church, the city being measured implied the entire uh, concentration of every part brought up to the exact standards of God's requirement. Remember when he had built the tabernacle, he gave what Moses the exact requirement. So he's doing the same thing again. Verse 16. And the city lieth four square and the length of it is as large as the breadth of the measure of the city with the reed, uh, 12,000 furlongs, and the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Okay. Each side was equal, so therefore it's a square. Consequently, the length and breadth are equal, and its height is said to be equal to its length. Okay. Eight furlongs equals a mile. The extent of the wall, therefore, is what? 1,500 miles. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you look at that picture there, if you said it, uh, the base of the city will cover from the Atlantic Ocean to the Rocky Mountains and from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good sized city. Mm -hmm. A little bit bigger than Atlanta in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To give you a better perspective of the size and height of the city, convert it into a number of 12 foot floors. Uh, this floor here, I would say, is 8 foot, or 10. Okay? Ten. The ceiling, I'm sorry. The floor from up there, up there is, it's their floor and it's our ceiling. I thought right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But anyway, this one's 8 foot, but let's say you use 12 foot. You can use 10 foot, you can use 8 foot, you can use whatever. But using 12 foot floors, there will be 15,000 times 5,280, what, miles, feet, foot per mile, divided by, what, 12 to get it like that, to be 6,600,000 floors in that city going up. Okay? That's, that's a lot of floors. Right? <laughs> I can't even comprehend. That's a bit taller than Empire State Building. Oh, or yeah. what's the one in, uh, over there in uh, Dubai. 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 That's the tallest one. Yeah, yeah whatever Dubai is. It's uh, a lot taller than any of others. Okay. Okay, these are supposed to be mansions, so let's say 3,000 square foot. Don, your, your house is not quite 3,000, is it? No, not quite. <laughs> It'd be about, about, three, about double mine, uh, but if it's 3,000 square foot of mansion or home on each floor, then it's 15,000 times 5,280 times 2 divided by 3,000 or what? 52,000 what? Houses per floor or mansions. A 3,000 foot mansion, you can put 52,000 on each floor. And how many floors are there? Six million six hundred thousand. Wow. Okay. 
So the number of homes in the city could accommodate if you fill the entire thing up would be what? 348 billion, 480 million mansions. But we know what their strengths in there. And they probably some what parks to walk your dog. <laughs> and some other things. So they wouldn't need to be that. Joe Cochran said that there, he believes there will be approximately from time the earth was created up to the flood, there were approximately six billion people. And he said since the flood, there have been six billion people. And so that's 12 billion. So this would hold a lot more than 12 billion. <laughs> and of course, we're still growing. So we may be another seven, seven. Right now, there's what? Four billion, four and a half billion on earth? Five billion? No, seven and a half billion. Seven and a half billion now. So if all of them died, uh, we'd have 12 plus seven. Okay, we'd have 19 and a half billion. That still would be a lot of homes left over for in, in, in public park. Maybe a ball field, too. <laughs> okay. 17. Who is that? Who's turn? We just forgot. It's the list. It's not my turn. Yeah, it's yours. Yeah. I just oh, it is? Uh-huh. Tell us like here. She got okay. carried away. In the <laughs> no, I'm still trying to think that out. And he measured the wall thereof 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of a man. That is of the angel. Okay, well, he's talking about this. This measurement is the height of the wall around the city. We were just discussing why do they need a wall, but anyway, God says that's wrong. The cubit comes from the from the word cubus, meaning what? Elbow. Okay, so this is a cubus. Okay, this is a measurement from the tip of the elbow to the tip of the middle finger. And it's generally estimated to be what one and a half feet or 18 inches okay okay the height of the wall converted to feet would be 144 times 18 divided by 12 or 200 what 16 feet uh, high or in this case 10 story uh, 10 foot buildings, which is normal in most buildings in downtown Atlanta, it'd be 21.6 stories high. That's a pretty good wall, in it. Yeah. You'd have to have an oxygen mask almost <laughs> <laughs> in, in today's term. Okay, but 21.6 stories, that's a high thing. Okay, verse 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Okay, Jasper, what well, is a stone of protection? It is said to promote what well, feelings of courage, health, and strength. Okay, so courage, health, and strength uh, comes from, from the Jasper. The city was pure gold, the most precious metal known. And currently, I looked it up this morning, it currently is listed as 1000 $813 per ounce. So if you had a whole city as big as this city is, <laughs> that goes from the Gulf of Mexico to Canada, from Atlantic to the Rocky Mountain, that's a lot of gold. Mm. Pure gold. And 1,813 ounces. Uh, Don's going to figure that out and have it next week. Oh, yeah. that would be. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. But in this case, uh, it's transfigured and glorified and is like pure glass. So gold is what, 99.9% pure? Mm -hmm. But this gold is what, 100% okay. pure. When you get to the 100%, it's clear. No drops. Okay. Clear enough. Lock into clear glass means the golden city would be so bright and varnished that it would seem to be glass reflecting the sunbeams. Verse 19. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a calcondony, the fourth an emerald. Okay. The list of the twelve foundation stones are represented of the what? The apostles. 
who are built upon the one foundation, Jesus Christ. Their holy doctrine lay the beginning of the gospel churches. Their first four are listed here, Jasper, Sapphire, etc. Jasper stone is very hard, some species of which are of a sea green color, but it generally is a bright uh, reddish brown. The sapphire is not mentioned elsewhere in the New Testament. It is a precious stone next to hardness to the diamond. You women, y'all like them diamonds. <laughs> okay, usually an iris or a sky blue color, but it's a very, uh, it's but of various shades. And this one is a, a variety of quartz. The stones are semi transparent or translucent due to their crystal structure. The emerald stone is a bright green color without any mixture and is one of the most beautiful of all gems. Okay. Uh, this, is the, this is the next uh, remaining stone of, of the 12. Okay. Who's had that? Dan? The fifth. You pronounce all of them? Yes. Because I, <laughs> yeah, I had the teenagers. So um, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite. The eighth barrel and the ninth a topaz, the tenth chrysoprasus, the eleventh hyacinth, the twelfth amorist. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm going to take you to the first one is a new complex of stone. It is made of an altering layer of uh, sardis and oxy and resulting in a reddish brown or yellow red color. Okay. The Sardine stone is a precious stone of a blood red color. You see a picture of all those stones here. The crystal shot is a dusty green with a cast of yellow, and we know it today as what? Peter? And metho is a clear gem of bluish green color. Topaz, I have to dog name Topaz. Okay. Topaz is a pale uh, dead green with a mixture of yellow. It is considered a variety of the sapphire. And the sun is a variety of, is different from the crystalline by having a blue fuss hue. Uh, what did you say that I one? Okay, it's a precious right. stone of deep reddish orange color. It is the same as the cinnamon stone. And the amorous is, is a gem of a purple or violet color composed of a strong blue or deep red. Verse 21, Thomas. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was one of the pearls, and the street of their city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. Okay. The streets of the city is referred to as the street interconnected, both horizontal and vertical. Okay, because it's going to have enough different colors. You got to be able to get from one level to the next level. We use elevators nowadays. Uh, <laughs> Back, back in these days, we don't have bodies like Christ. We can just, like on Star Trek, we can just re, <laughs> regroup ourselves in a different, on a different story. Okay? They were pure gold. Uh, they were pure gold in Revelation 21 18 as transparent glass. We do not really totally understand how a street can be pure gold and transparent, but we do know the city will be of great beauty in all aspects. Verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty, the Lamb of the temple, of okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There is no temple Amen. or place of worship in New Jerusalem because the purpose of the local temple has not been served. Mm -hmm. It is now a holy world, all holy. No particular portion of it will be set apart for the purpose of public worship. But in all places, God will be what? Adored. Mm -hmm. And God will be in all places like he is today. Yeah. <clears throat> the saints there shall want nothing. Won't be hungry. Mm -hmm. And therefore shall not need a house of prayer. They shall know perfectly and therefore will not need any to teach them. They will, shall always seek Christ, and so will they need no sacrament to remember him. Okay? So 
they won't need teaching. So God's in the Bible it says, study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. By this time, you will know all and you'll be perfect mm -hmm. in, in your knowledge. And you won't need any sacrament. We do the Lord's Supper we did a couple of weeks ago, you remember? Uh, what to remember him. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Mm -hmm. Okay. The sun and the moon are the two great what, luminaries. Uh, moon actually reflects, right? The uh, great luminaries are a world made by God. The sun rules what by day, and the moon rules by night. The heaven will be no need for these, for the glory of God will fill it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. Okay. The city is made up of people of God, and among the people of God, there will be kings and nations of them. The identity of the kings of the earth and the nations of them is not clear to us. Bible scholars have speculated, again speculated, uh, on the different possibilities. The most probable explanation seems to be, be that the nations are groups of believers uh, viewed according to their own creation nationality. Okay, so we're what? Well, Americans. Uh, the Canadians north of us, Mexicans to the south of us, so, but the nation, their old creation nationality, which they will retain in the new creation. The kings or rulers are believing kings. Okay, what happened to the old unbelieving kings? They're in hell, right? Mm -hmm. But all the believing kings are Rule, who rule over nations during the old creation. That's right And Psalm 71, uh, 11, uh, point to this fact. Uh, let's go there real quick. Okay, Psalm 71, 11. Ye, yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. So there are kings during that time. Verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Okay. The gates will never be closed mm -hmm. because there is no need. The entrance are only closed when night comes for safety in the old in the old world and security, but there is no night there. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be daytime all the time. The light of the Lord God and and Christ shines continually. Verse 26. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Okay. They is referring to the kings and nations mentioned previously in verse 24. See, they don't live in the city, they, but they come in through the gates. Okay. The gates will admit these leaders who will bring glory and honor to God from their respective groups of followers. This is a picture of worship uh, in the new cre creation. The nation shall stream into the city with their gifts to lay their best upon its altar and to enjoy in turn its rest and peace and security and life. Okay, Don, this is your answer. We're talking about is it above the earth or the, set, or the new Jerusalem sitting on there? For the king, old kings to come in and out, they don't have, they can't fly like we can, the, the, the saved believers, so they have to walk in through the gate. So it has to be on the ground. All right. Okay, verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, that neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Okay. This strong language denotes the absolute exclusion of any types of sin. Okay. Nothing will be found in that blessed city, 
New Jerusalem, which is unholy or more sinful. It will be a pure world. Second Peter uh, three thirteen. Okay, let's see. Second Peter three thirteen says, Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth which dwells righteousness. Okay. The holy city will contain only true, holy, preserving believers. This blessedness will be enjoyed by only true believers who rested in the Lamb's book of life. Okay, Revelation 17, 8. Revelation 17 says that the beast that I shall saw was and is not, and they shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into prediction, uh, and they shall dwell on the earth. They shall wonder whose name were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the best that was and is not and yet is. Okay? So, that concludes our Revelations 21 study.